Minor Illusion is ridiculous. It's a powerful cantrip for spellcasters who'd rather fleece their foes than blast them outright. And the variety of uses for Minor Illusion makes it ridiculous. It can help you deceive plebs, hide from foes, and create distractions. Here's the spell's description and the classes you can cast it. Now let's get right into seven ways to use Minor Illusion in your next D&D game. For starters, we've got bolstering ability checks. This can take many different forms, but I'll quickly cover a few common examples. To bolster intimidation checks, create the sound of an approaching army, the shriek of a banshee, the roar of a dragon, or the voice of a commanding officer. To improve a deception check, mimic the sound of a guard's voice after you've heard it and dispatched of them. This can help get past locked doors and such. To improve a sleight of hand check, palm the thing you want to steal while also creating a minor illusion duplicate of the thing. Worst case, you get a one minute head start if they catch on. To improve a performance check, use minor illusion to create an image of a battle scene that you're singing about. Or, the image of blood on your clothes to sell yourself as injured or deceased. To improve a persuasion check, make an illusory royal seal or a document to gain entry somewhere you couldn't get otherwise. There are many more possibilities and many more variations of each of the examples I mentioned, but for now let's move on to use number two, and that's hiding. This can also mean a few different things. Obscuring yourself so that you're behind illusory cover will give you attack advantage from being an unseen attacker, which is a popular application of the spell. One that's especially enjoyed by arcane trickster rogues who can always start off a fight with advantage and sneak attack this way. Minor Illusion can also be used for more passive hiding, as you can create something like a box or a barrel around yourself so that you can listen in on conversations. Or you can cast around something else that you want to hide, like a pile of bodies. Another similar use of Minor Illusion is for escaping pursuit. For this trick to work, you'll need to run into visual range of your pursuers before casting the spell. But once you're far enough away, the idea is to create an illusory wall behind yourself after you go down a narrow enough corridor. However, if the illusion looks too out of place, your pursuers might notice with an investigation check. But hey, at least they wasted an action to do so. For a sneakier version of this trick, look no further than the spell's description. Create muddy footprints that put pursuers on the wrong trail while you go in the opposite direction. The next set of uses for minor illusion is for bait, distractions, and diversions. Bait could take a few different forms, but the most obvious is a visual illusion like a big pile of gold and precious gems. On the more nefarious side, you could conjure the sound of a screaming enemy to cause others to investigate the hubbub. For diversions, eerie or menacing sounds like whispers or growls can unnerve many creatures and possibly even cause them to abandon their posts. Or just the mundane sound of someone knocking on the door to buy you some time to look around. And for distractions, you could use minor illusion to create the sound of a commanding officer yelling incorrect information possibly causing enemy creatures to make bad tactical decisions. My next use of Minor Illusion is a little silly, but it can actually be useful in a pinch, and that's silent communication. The idea here is to basically create subtitles or speech bubbles instead of speaking. This could come in handy when communicating with a literate deaf person, but it's more likely to come up if your party needs to say something without speaking. You could also use this as a very short-range walkie-talkie to whisper directly into your ally's ear, or come up with a pre-established bird call that have different meanings to communicate from an even greater distance. Another great use of Minor Illusion is for creating fake objects. Want to taunt the big bad evil guy by showing them that you already have their lousy MacGuffin? Minor Illusion it into your hand and watch the look on their face before you pretend to pocket it. Or make a fake chair so that when somebody tries to sit down, they fall prone. Not sure if there's combat utility there, but it's fun for pranks. A more practical social use of Minor Illusion is for conjuring images. It doesn't matter if you're a terrible artist. With Minor Illusion, you can draft up the perfect wanted poster to show people with the snap of a finger or show them the exact artifact that you're looking for, if you know what it looks like. Heck, you can even make a miniature version of a room you've seen before so that you can show its layout to others. I've gone through seven uses of Minor Illusion, but you're only limited by your imagination. And of course, the rules of the spell. This is one of the trickier spells to DM, as are many illusion spells in the game. But let's quickly cover a few common rules questions. Rule number one is that images can't move. Minor Illusion creates stationary, static holograms. If you put an illusory hat on your head, it won't move with you. You can't make running water and the like. Those types of effects are reserved for higher level illusion spells. Rule number two is that physical interaction breaks the spell, kind of. More specifically, the illusion becomes evident to anyone who witnesses that revelation. In other words, if someone sees you shoot an arrow from inside a solid boulder, they'll see through the illusion, after you've already benefited from advantage as an unseen attacker. Rule number three is that you can hide behind minor illusion. As I already mentioned in a couple of uses for the spell. However, you do need to fit in the five foot cube, so medium creatures will need to be prone in order to fit within it. Still, you don't need to necessarily be entirely concealed to become hidden. And the final rule for minor illusion is a hotly debated one, but rules as written, 
Minor Illusion can't create creatures. The spell's description and the game's designers confirm that the image you create with Minor Illusion is limited to objects. However, many players argue that things like taxidermied animals, wax figurines, and corpses are all considered objects, and can therefore be made with Minor Illusion. This rule is very Dungeon Master dependent, so be sure to ask your DM how they plan to rule this if it's something you hope to do. Those are the big rules questions surrounding Minor Illusion. But now let's get into the biggest question of all. Is Minor Illusion a good spell? My answer is a simple and emphatic yes. Minor Illusion is right up there with spells like Prestidigitation and Thaumaturgy for outrageous utility in a single cantrip. While much of its power ultimately comes down to DM Fiat, it's undeniable that the spell offers an incredible range of uses. It doesn't matter if you're in a combat-heavy game or one that's focused more on role-playing and exploration. Minor Illusion is a good spell in any campaign. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you found this guide on Minor Illusion helpful and can show your appreciation with a like and subscribe. It's a massive help for small YouTubers like me. If you have any stories about using Minor Illusion in your own Dungeons & Dragons game or questions about the spell's rules, please share them in the comments below. This is D&D Lounge wishing you the best of luck in your next spellcasting venture.